Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of 30 on Thursday's uh, Suskutex Fertility Now uh, biweekly webinar series. A little housekeeping if people are still joining uh, the, the webinar. Uh, as I mentioned, 30 on Thursdays is a biweekly webinar series that we cover anything and everything having to do with uh, SharePoint. Our next webinar will be Thursday, May 30th at 1.30, and we're going to go through a, a use case where we automate and track accounts payable processes in SharePoint 2010 uh, using some third-party add-ons and some other features within SharePoint. Uh, you can get the full schedule at suskutech.com slash webinars. Today's session is being recorded, so if you need to duck out early, um, it will be available on our website come probably tomorrow afternoon sometime. Uh, and we have a complete archive of all of our past sessions located at suskytech.com slash archive webinars. Uh, and during today's session, as Jesse's going through the material, or as Danny's going through the material, um, you can use the question window uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, I will moderate as we go, and we'll typically wait till the end and, and go through all the questions. Uh, we do have a couple of online courses coming up. Um, these are longer format, more formalized training. We have one on PowerShell uh, coming up next week, and then we have a Nintex one coming up in July. Uh, and these are all virtual. The Nintex is a two-day. The PowerShell is uh, about a three-hour uh, web-based training. And we have all of the previous ones of those available on our website. You can get those at suskutech.com slash online classes. And uh, both Danny and I will be presenting at the SharePointConference.org coming up in just about a month. Um, it's at the uh, Gaylord in National Harbor, um, June 13th and 14th. Uh, anybody on the session today, there, you can use the coupon code 30T15 uh, to get 15% off your registration for that, that awesome event. So hope to see you there. Uh, you can get all the information on that on SharePointConference.org. And with that, we're going to jump into today's topic. Again, the topic is new geolocation features in SharePoint 2013. Our presenter is Danny Jesse. He's a senior SharePoint architect here at Protivity. I will be your moderator. I'm Steve Witt, and I'm the director of product and training here at Protivity. So with that, that's enough of me talking. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Danny. Thank you, Steve. So hopefully everyone can now see the slides. Yep. Uh, as Steve said, Looks good. great. My name is Danny Jesse, and I'm here to talk to you today about the new geolocation features in SharePoint 2013. So just to uh, get a brief overview here, um, the concept of geolocation, obviously we're referring to location-based metadata. Uh, and specifically in the case of geolocation with SharePoint 2013, we're dealing with a point location, so a latitude and a longitude pair. Uh, and that sort of data is useful for things like uh, obtaining the current user's location via GPS um, or just associating content with a place uh, and being able to render that uh, and search for it on a map. Uh, and then, of course, you know, by virtue of that map view, having the ability to discover content based on proximity to a specific location. So I'm sure this is review for most people, but obviously our globe is divided into uh, latitude and longitude grid. Uh, and so you see here the way that it's depicted with zero degrees latitude at the equator, zero degrees longitude at the prime meridian, uh, and then as you go uh, west of the prime meridian, longitude values are negative uh, or west, and uh, values to the east are positive or to the right, uh, and same with latitudes going north are positive and going south are negative. So when we refer to a specific location, uh, we'll use uh, Susky Tech headquarters in Winchester, Virginia as an example. Uh, we can refer to its point location uh, in a number of different ways here. So you see uh, degrees, minutes, seconds in, in that first format. But when we're dealing with storing this data, um, generally we're going to store it as a decimal numeric value. Um, so you see here we, uh, we translate the north and the west components into uh, positive and negative latitude and longitude values, respectively. And you'll see how this is put in practice uh, as we get into some of the demos later on. So when we wanted to develop geolocation solutions prior to SharePoint 2013, uh, generally speaking, the way that we did that was by defining number uh, site columns to store latitude and longitude values. And we stored them separately, uh, each in their own site column. Uh, there was no native mapping integration that came with the platform. I know certainly myself and, and many other developers have, uh, have probably at one time or another built some sort of an integrated Google or Bing mapping solution that tied into these custom latitude and longitude site columns. Uh, and again, without custom development, there was no native way to obtain a user's uh, GPS location. And obviously, uh, you know, with the uh, 
drastic expansion of, of mobile computing and mobile devices with GPS. Uh, that's, that's something that users expect in their mobile applications. So enter SharePoint 2013 into the equation. And SharePoint 2013 offers a new geolocation field type. And the primary reason that SharePoint 2013 is able to offer this, um, and prior versions of SharePoint were not, uh, is that because of the, uh, the database dependency. So with SQL Server 2008 came the introduction of some of the geography data types, um, which allowed for coordinate-based inf information to be stored in a SQL Server table. Uh, now SharePoint's able to leverage that, um, and in this case it's through the use of this geolocation field type. So if your web browser supports the W3C geolocation APIs, um, you can actually allow your current location to be shared, and that information can automatically be populated into a geolocation field. Uh, while at the same time, you still retain the ability to enter manually uh, latitude and longitude values as uh, numeric decimal numbers. Um, and what's really cool about this field type is that it automatically renders these locations on a Bing map. So no more is custom development needed to, uh, to handle the whole mapping layer. So there are some prerequisites here. Uh, depending on the version of SQL Server you're using, so with SharePoint 2013, you could be using SQL Server 2008 R2 uh, Service Pack 1, or you could be using SQL Server 2012. Uh, you do have to install from the SQL Server feature pack uh, this SQL Sys CLR types installer package. Uh, and that needs to be installed on all of your SharePoint front ends in your farm. Um, and then beyond that, once that's in place, you do need to register for a Bing Maps API key. So Similar to uh, other geolocation-based solutions you may have built in the past, um, obviously you do still need to, through the mapping provider, tie in uh, an API key to the specific domain where you're hosting SharePoint. So that's a fairly straightforward process, and I have some screenshots of that as we move along here. So when you do sign up for that Bing Maps API key at bingmapsportal.com, uh, you have the option to choose from uh, a trial key or a basic key. So you'll see in the demos, uh, I'm using a trial key. Uh, those are good for development-based scenarios. Um, when you get into production, you're going to be looking at, at using perhaps a basic key, which would be free of charge, um, or obviously uh, the larger scale your application is, you, you do need to uh, potentially enter into the enterprise realm, uh, and there would be a cost associated with that. But certainly there's never any cost associated with uh, setting up a, a trial key, and that's what we're going to do here. So most of my demos today are going to be using my um, Office 365 uh, SharePoint Online dev tenant, um, which is at djsp.sharepoint.com. So you'll see here from bingmapsportal.com, I simply registered that application URL, uh, said it was a public website, and obtained a trial key. Uh, and you'll see in the uh, code samples where we go later on today, we're going to actually have to tell SharePoint what that Bing Maps API key is. And there are two ways to do this. So in an on-premises environment, uh, you can run a PowerShell commandlet, set SP Bing Maps key. Uh, and that will allow you to set it at the farm level. Um, obviously, that's not an option uh, when you're dealing with Office 365. But fortunately, this Bing Maps key can also be set at the individual site level. So using the client object model, uh, and I do have some code to do this, and we'll walk through that. Uh, it's simply a, a property stored in the SPWeb's property bag. So that API key that you get when you register at bingmapsportal.com, you simply need to associate with that SPWeb object like, uh, like you see on the screen there. So once you've done that, um, we actually need to start then by building out a geolocation site column through the UI. But wait, we can't build one through the UI. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have a good answer, and, and really uh, none of the literature out there has a very good answer about why it's not possible to create a geolocation site column through the UI. Uh, it simply cannot be done. What you can do, however, is create this site column via code or uh, via script uh, and using XML. So as you see here, uh, we have an XML snippet that basically declares a, a field of type geolocation. Uh, and I've happened to give it the, the name geolocation as well, but uh, you can call it anything you want. The key here is that the type equals geolocation. So we'll actually create this uh, declaratively through XML, but then run some code to create the site column. And once we've created that site column programmatically, fortunately then we have the ability to add it to lists uh, using some of the standard mechanisms, either through SharePoint Designer or through the browser, through the UI. 
So then, uh, once you've created that and you've used the geolocation column in a list, uh, and we'll walk through this in some of the demos here, but just kind of want to show you what the user interface looks like for these things. Um, when you have a geolocation field in a list, in the default new item form for a list, you see that specify location or use my location. So uh, in the past, where you might have seen those separate, uh, separate text boxes for storing the latitude and the longitude values, um, now that's kind of consolidated into this geolocation field UI. But when I click specify location, it's going to prompt me for those separate values uh, distinctly provided like that. And once I've entered those values, uh, that will automatically be replaced by this map, which will be rendered with a place mark uh, centered on whatever that latitude and longitude location is that I entered. Alternately, if I click use my location, again, assuming my browser supports the W3C geolocation APIs, uh, usually your browser is going to, to prompt you to share that location uh, unless you've turned that off by default. Or if you've turned off location sharing entirely, then you may not have the option to do this. Uh, but assuming that you uh, grant permission to share your location, your current GPS location would then be pulled uh, in place. So once you've entered some items into this list, uh, you'll see the default view for the list then includes this little geolocation place mark, so that little globe with a place mark on it. And when you click that, that will pop up the little card that you see here, uh, again, with a map view, a Bing Maps view, centered on whatever location has been specified for that particular item. Another feature that comes with any list where you've added a column of type geolocation is the ability to create a map-based view for the entire list. So when you're going to create a new view, um, what I've circled there, the map view, will not appear uh, in the new view screen unless there is a geolocation column in that list. But if there is, you have the ability to create a map-based view. And that will actually render, um, as you see here, uh, for instance, an item, a list with three items in it with different locations. Uh, it will actually put numbered place marks that correspond to each of the list items um, associated with the locations of those items. So for developers, uh, when you're interacting with the object model and you want to uh, populate a geolocation value in a list item, you have two options for doing that. So option one is to use the class field geolocation value. And you see in the example here, uh, there is a field geolocation value object that has latitude and longitude properties that you can set. And those are just numeric properties here. And then you assign that value into the SP list item, and you can update it from there. Alternately, if you've built um, geolocation and mapping-based solutions in the past, you might be familiar with something that's known as well-known text, or WKT format. Uh, and that's actually just a string format for specifying these point locations. So it's in the format, uh, the, the keyword point, in all caps, and then within parentheses, longitude, space, latitude. Uh, and I do make the point that it is longitude before latitude. Uh, it might be a little counterintuitive. We're used to specifying locations as latitude, then longitude but the way that the WKT format specifies it is longitude first. And then you can simply set that uh, just by setting a string literal um, to the SP list items geolocation field. Now what I've talked about prior to this can be used in both an on-premises as well as a, a hosted or a Office 365 environment. Um, if we have time today as we go through the demos, I will show you um, another option for on-prem developers which is the ability to take advantage of something that's new in SharePoint 2013. That's the, uh, the client-side rendering framework to actually specify a custom field type. So custom field types themselves are not new in SharePoint 2013. Uh, in prior versions of SharePoint, you would have used XSLT to, to define some of the, uh, the views um, for, for these custom field types. Uh, but in SharePoint 2013, now we use this client-side rendering, this, this JavaScript-based framework. Um, and if we have time today, I'm going to walk through the demo that you see the link to here. Uh, it's a great blog post where somebody's actually developed a, a custom geolocation field that actually leverages Google Maps instead of the default Bing Maps. So you are, are certainly not limited to what SharePoint provides you out of the box. Um, you have the capability to, uh, to certainly extend this capability um, in any way that, that JavaScript would allow you to do. So with that, I will hop over into my CloudShare environment and we'll start taking a look at some of these demos here. Is uh, everybody able to see the uh, the CloudShare screen now? Yep, I'm seeing Visual Studio, it looks like. Yes. Yep. Great, thank you. 
So we have just a couple quick applications that we're going to walk through here. So this is just a very simple console application um, using the .NET managed client object model. Uh, and what I've done here is simply, um, you know, connected to my SharePoint online environment, this djsp.sharepoint.com, uh, with my credentials. And then here you see the XML to create that geolocation site column. So if we hop over into my SharePoint online environment right now, We'll go ahead and sign in here. At this point, this is a just a very vanilla SharePoint Online site. If we look at the site columns, I don't currently have any geolocation columns. I don't have any geolocation type or group for my site columns. But once I create this, um, this is going to basically allow me by adding this field as XML to the fields collection of my SP web. So this is creating a new site column, again, with the name uh, geolocation and of type geolocation. Uh, and then here actually is the, uh, the API key that I received from the Bing Maps portal when I signed up for that. And here's how I just use the, uh, the all properties, the property bag for that web object to set that API key value. So if I go ahead and run this, I should see a success message, and I do. So with that, if I return back to my SharePoint Online site here, I should now have a geolocation site column, and I do. So within this group here, you see I now have this site column with name uh, and type geolocation. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and create just a custom list. Uh, and if you were around a couple months ago when I did my uh, Get Started with Apps for SharePoint 2013, uh, 30 on Thursday, you'll recall that when we go to add a list in SharePoint 2013, we're actually adding an app. So we're going to use the Custom List app. And I'm just going to call this Location List. And once I've created this list, I'm going to add my geolocation column to that list. So much the same way that we would uh, add columns to, to any list. I'm just going to add from existing site columns and add that geolocation column. So now I have a standard custom list called location list, and it has a title column and a geolocation column. So without getting too much into the specifics here, I'm going to quickly deploy an app for SharePoint. I'm going to deploy this to my Office 365 site. And it's actually going to deploy an app part uh, just a standard HTML page with a text box and a button. And what I'm going to do is take every location um, that users enter into that text box, and when they press the button, I'm going to leverage another Bing API. So this isn't something that comes with SharePoint. But again, you know, opening up all the potential of what we can do with, with AJAX and client script, we're actually going to reach out to a Bing geocoding web service um, via JavaScript, and we're going to get the coordinate value associated with the location that I type in. And we're going to store that name as well as that location in this location list I just created. So if I quickly deploy this app here, and again, this isn't a session on apps for SharePoint 2013, but you'll see once this app deploys, it is going to prompt me um, for, to, to grant that app permissions to write to the list. So when the screen comes up, I'm going to say I trust this app to write to that location list. And what we really need to see here is what I'm going to hop over and take a look at now. I apologize, I have to log in one more time to this. So again, we're back on the home page of my Office 365 site. And I'm just going to very quickly add this app part that was just deployed with my app to the page here. my 30 on Thursday geocoder. So what you see here, just a simple text box and a button, but there's some JavaScript that goes on behind the scenes when that button is pressed. 
It's going to take whatever string I enter into that text box. It's going to call the Bing geocoding API uh, and get an actual point, latitude, and longitude location for whatever string I enter in there. And then it's going to add an item to that location list with the title that corresponds to the value I type in here. And then using that geolocation site column, we're actually going to store the latitude and longitude values of that location in the list. So if I enter in Winchester, Virginia here, I get a success message here. If I navigate over to my location list, you see now that that item has been added to the list. So again, that title corresponds with what I typed in. And then there's that place mark for the geolocation. So if I click this, we now see this little pop-up Bing Maps card centered on Winchester, Virginia. So if I go ahead and enter in maybe just one or two more locations here. So for instance, Richmond, Virginia. Of course, I have to keep reminding myself to uh, show that mixed content since my SharePoint Online site is using SSL. So now I have two entries in this list. And then also, just for posterity's sake, I'll go ahead and show you the fact that I can also still add items to this list myself for Danny's current location. And I'll actually say, go ahead and use my location. So down at the bottom of the screen here, you see IE is saying, hey, this site wants to track my location. So I'll go ahead and allow that. And you see here, I'm in Alexandria, Virginia right now. There's my current location. So if I save these items to the list here, you see how this UI starts to build out as I add items to the list. Now let's go ahead and create a map view. So if I go to create view here, since I have this geolocation column in the list, I have the ability to choose map view as one of my view types. And I'll just go ahead and call this map and say OK. And so there you see the three locations that I just entered into this list, each with their own associated place marks, all rendered on this Bing map. So no code necessary on my part to handle loading the map or where to plot the place marks or how to plot the place marks. Uh, that all comes out of the box with SharePoint 2013. So one final demo I'll go ahead and show you. So again, all of that was done in Office 365. So I was able to set the Bing Maps API key. I was able to create the site column, deploy an app that created an app part that contains some JavaScript code that leveraged the Bing Maps API to obtain my location or obtain the location associated with a text value that gets entered in and plot all of those on a map. And that's great. But we talked a little bit about that custom field type. Um, and using the, uh, the JS link to, to take advantage of the new client-side rendering framework. So this isn't my code. This is actually the code that's associated with that blog post I linked to earlier. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll coordinate to, to make sure that the, uh, the link to these slides gets uh, published out. Uh, I'll certainly tweet out the link after this session's over. But what I wanted to show you here um, is in an on-premises environment how we can further extend this capability. So I'm just going to um, quickly hop over to my on-prem site. We'll close out of these. So in my on-prem site, if I just create another custom list, and again, remember we're adding the custom list app to create a custom list in SharePoint 2013. This is actually going to be a custom field type that's going to uh, look and feel a lot like what you just saw in the Office 365 demo. But again, this is on-prem. And it's also going to use uh, Google Maps as well as the Google Geocoding API. So this will be my Google Map list. And perhaps sometime we can do another 30 on Thursday just about this client-side rendering framework and custom field types in SharePoint 2013. But suffice it to say, uh, when I deploy that solution, I have the ability to add a column to this list that corresponds to my custom field type. If I go up to list in the ribbon here, and I go to add a column to this list, When we deploy one of these custom field types, it actually adds a list, adds a, uh, a type to this list here. So 
this is a Google Maps geolocation column that I've uh, built out. We'll just call this location. And when I go to add an item to this list, through that custom rendering framework, I have the ability to have complete control over the way that this, uh, this field gets rendered um, using JavaScript. So in this case, this actually takes uh, the two components of the demo that you just saw me do in the, uh, in the hosted Office 365 environment and combine them into the actual rendering of this field uh, directly in the new list item view. So what this is doing is actually rendering a text box uh, and a search button. It's going to leverage the Google Map geocoding service um, and take that location that gets returned and plot it on a Google Map. So again, this is only something that we're going to be able to do in an on-premises environment because we are actually uh, deploying files to the file system of the server. There's an XML file that's required um, in the templates XML folder to, uh, to support these custom field types. So unfortunately, this is a non-starter in the cloud. But if I enter in my location here, Winchester, Virginia, and that's the string I want to geocode as well. When I click search, it actually obtains that longitude and latitude value from the Google Maps API. And what you see here now is a Google Map rendered with a place mark centered on Winchester, Virginia. So if I click Save here, that custom field type also has a mechanism for controlling the way that it's rendered here in the default view of the list. So where we had that little globe with the place mark with the out of the box uh, UI, we have this little call out balloon here. And when I click that, it actually pops up a Google map with that place mark centered on the location. So again, a lot of uh, additional flexibility and capability that can be built in um, through custom dev, uh, at least in an on-prem environment. Um, but you know, some flexibility to, to do these sorts of things in the cloud as well. And with that, I will hand control back over to Steve, or perhaps Steve can assume control again. Okay. Thanks, Danny. Um, I think we'll open it up now for questions. Uh, Danny's contact information is on the screen there, uh, and I'll leave it. There's no questions in the question window currently, but we'll leave it open for a little bit, see if anybody has any questions. Not seeing anything come in here. Danny, that means you were spot on perfect. There was no questions. Either, either that or something was wrong with my connection and nobody actually saw or heard anything that I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's loud and clear. Now, now we're getting some, they're, they're not questions, they just say, uh, awesome, thanks, great, it's awesome. Well, thank you very much and thank you all for your time. All right, thank you, Danny. And to everybody else, we will, uh, we will see you in two weeks uh, where we're going to talk about uh, a case study with accounts payable in uh, SharePoint 2010. Uh, and with that, we will conclude today's 30 on Thursday. Thanks, everybody.